And then we're ready to introduce the next speaker. Um, will there be a... So we're happy to introduce Alexei Nedviga um, from the Grodina Film Center with the intriguing title, I think, Distribution is not a toy. Um, so we look forward to hearing it. Welcome. Hello to everybody. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to be here among all the professionals. Professionals in the area of my favorite art, documentary film. So coming back, what my Swedish colleague was saying yesterday about the miracle, about the fairy tale. Um, applied to documentary films. Of course that's possible. Because that is already a miracle and a fairy tale. The life is a miracle and a reflection of life in the documentary film. That uh, great deed of a mankind, at least that part of mankind that's involved in documentary films. I think documentary films play a huge role in non-commercial slice of work. It's not about making money. It's very important in making a man. That's a huge tool of development, huge tool of influence and development. We can argue about that, and all the professionals like to argue about that. Does the cinema have to educate? Does the cinema have to bring up people? But I'm not going to talk about it now. But the important thing is that's a tool of development that helps a man um, study the world around him or her and inside of him or her and making this world closer. I mean, that, that's just a huge tool. That's wonderful. A documentary film played a huge role alongside with the feature film, and I'm thinking about the 1960s and the Soviet films. That was a new wave of Soviet documentary films, because then in almost every feature film, there were tricks and tools of documentary filmmaking. The, even I want to say there were pieces of documentary film in the feature film. And that made films more truthful, more down to earth. I can say that I'm really in love with the documentary films. Even though I'm an engineer and a builder by education, construction engineer, Thanks to film clubs, that was quite a developed network in the Soviet Union. A lot of cities and towns had film clubs. I was then living in Zaporozhye in Ukraine. So it's the film club in Zaporozhye that changed me completely as a person, thanks to those screenings, thanks to those people who were working in that film club, my life changed. In the end, I became a journalist. I worked in the radio. In the 1990s, when we lost the Soviet Union, I worked in the Kiev Film Festival, and I also worked in the Message to Men Film Festival in St. Petersburg. And looking at those programs, at those competitions, at the special programs of retrospectives by the great masters of documentary films, I was just crying literally because I couldn't understand how to show it to the broader audience how to do that I couldn't understand that because in the 1990s the release was you know, dying out a film release because there were videotapes 
and then people thought that you just need a television screen and that's it. But I was still making the reports, I was still working. I tried to understand what's happening in the documentary films. Coming back from Ukraine to St. Petersburg, I, s I took part in the uh, social movement, that's the Museum of Cinema in St. Petersburg. And that group of people of that movement were existing in that group of people during the vacuum that was reigning the release. I could almost hear those people during the reports you made yesterday. I'm remembering that we created a program of film encyclopedia in the um, Dom Kino, in the House of Cinema, in the Rodina, and in the framework of those programs, we showed two films and then a um, talking discussion after the screening. For me, film as an art is possible only on the big screen when there is a big audience. I still don't understand how can you watch the movie on TV, on the computer screen, like online, this games. I don't know, maybe, maybe times change. And perhaps you have to accept those new formats, but I am keeping my own opinion and I love classic screening. So you go to the movie theater and you watch on the big screen. Only then you have a piece of art, you have a masterpiece, when the lights fade out and you have a projection light on the screen, the light that materializes the world that first appeared in the head of a director and the group of people working with him. Uh, well, what happened is in the year 2012, I had a proposal from the State Theatre to become a programming director in this Rodina Film Centre. I couldn't have even dreamt about that. It was a miracle that happened, a huge miracle. I was already working on Len Nauch Film Studios and I was um, working with science fiction films. I was an editor, I was a second director, I was a scriptwriter. I was the head of a sh shooting group, so I knew all the process from the application and up to finishing and releasing the film. I understand what it costs, I understand what's needed for the process, I understand what efforts need to be taken and what kind of people do that. I also saw the head of the studios, the administration. I also learned what kind of people they are and how they take part in the process. Well, by the year 2012, I was really ripe, I was ready to work with the repertory and the programming for the state movie center, Rodina, that's very close to us. I'm not going to show you the photos because I'm sure you guys can see that we're not too far away from there. Today or tomorrow you can just walk there. And by the way, watch the Message to Men program. And Message to Men, I hope, stays regular guest of ours. I think it started in 1990s. That Dom Kino, the House of Cinema, is in the same building with us. And us, we're showing the program of the Message to Men every year. So we have direct um, contact with the Message to Men Film Festival. Now, talking about our work, in the repertory of a film theater, uh, nobody was even talking about the documentary films. My task was to make it so that the documentary films become regular on the program. 
it was not enough just to invest into advertising, organizing, uh, regular screening, like once a month, once a week. No, you need a group of people for that. You need financing for it. No, we didn't have financing, of course. I turned to distribution. There was a, f a few dozens of companies that were working in Russian market then, but they couldn't offer me anything. I remember Mar Marina Abramovich feature film. There was screening and the director was there. And this film, the artist is there, was screened for three months in our movie theater. Imagine it, three months. Not one screening, not two screening, not a week of screenings, but three months. I wrote down the names of the few full-length documentary films that were released. First, I started writing down the statistics, how much money they brought, how many audience members were in the, in the hall. But then I thought, it's not important. Because during the discussion yesterday and today, I understood one thing. Money, documentary films should not be measured by money brought. The audience is not stupid, no? The audience can very easily define whether they should watch the movie or they don't, they shouldn't watch the film. For example, Samsara film. In 2014, we showed it for seven months in a row. That's a full length, very serious, technically very serious film, philosophically very deep film. What it means, the audience needs that. The audience wants to have those feelings. The audience is looking for some dialogue, very thoughtful dialogue, very serious dialogue that is coming from the screen. Even the film is silent. There is no text. There is music. There are images. So the initial data is image for the film. And that's what we have from the screen. I can say that from the year 2012, we didn't make big progress in terms of distribution companies, film distribution companies. Some companies emerged which offer rather regularly documentary films, but they have their own direction, they have their own task. It's usually films about some stars about people with a big name. So if you read what the Western producers would write or the Russian producers would write, you every now and then can read the phrase. I, I would like to have a star in my film. They, can, they cannot see the film otherwise. They don't understand that the film can be made about some spiritual suffering, about the relations between two very close people, or about the relations between the people that are brought together by fate, otherwise not very close. So this um, genre of film that I call anthropological cinema is created by a person who is rethinking his or her life experience using the technical mode, technical tools that he or she has, maybe not up-to-date technical tools. There are some documentary films on the 8 millimeter, 16 millimeters from the family archive filmed by the grandfather, for example, grandmother, and the person runs into that and then thinks, oh, well, I'll make a family story because I still have a projector. He does the editing. And there is a masterpiece. 
one of the few masterpieces that was released recently. It's an American film by a musician, by a lady musician, Anderson, I, uh, um, The Dog's Heart. It's a unique film. How did it make it to the release? Because a lot of films get a w awards in the festivals. This film got the award in Venice, and then it's in the release. I grasped on this film, and I was happy to show it within for three months. So the whole summer, I showed it, starting from June and all the way up to the 1st of September, The Dog's Heart. I had this film in my theater in Rodina. Teachers, educators came to me from um, the Institute of Film and Television and asked me for a copy so they could show the film to students during the lectures, maybe to their colleagues. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't, I don't have the right. But even if I broke the law and I started distributing this film by making copies, I still wouldn't have done that. It's a DCP. So you can't really put it on DVD. No. But anyway, I just remembered about that. What I want to say is that recently, as a thesis for my speech, I was asked by the organizers of this conference, I was writing that to me, a movie theater is like a tool. It's a transmitter that gets the information, that gets the information. So if the stations are delivering some news, so on that level, this tool, the movie theater, like channel as a transmitter, he can get all those 100 or 10 signals. But, but if nothing is transmitted, that even if your movie theater is very sensitive, it will not pass on this information because it's not there to begin with. Now, why do I say that? Do you have distributors among you guys? No, I don't see. No hands. Before these distributors start buying the rights and putting the documentary films in the release, releasing the documentary films. We will continue this film screening in the club, the film club special events, have the musician help us or use the clowns to help us do the screening together with the clowns. And of course you have to have a state support special program of the state to support the documentary films. So before the state, the government understands that it needs to support the documentary films. Then the government is real. Then the population becomes more free. Then the population becomes more happy. And before that happens, we'll have this really strange situation with the documentary films and the release. No? But I'm not desperate. I'm very optimistic. Anywhere I can, I deliver a message that the movie theater, the movie center Rotina is a venue platform for documentary films. I announce it to everybody, many companies, many producers, many directors. I am cl clear. I say, please come to us. Don't wait for people to ask your films. Bring me the films. We will release your films. It's not like we're going to screen them, but we'll try to help you with the release. Even though we do function as a film center too, because on Saturdays, for example, we show classics and feature films, and on Wednesday we have documentary films. So, and I'm not going to talk about it now in detail. So we can talk separately. We have the whole conference about that. But I'm talking to you. Everybody should understand one thing. We're open. 
My movie theater is open. We're open for collaboration with everybody. We're happy to show the documentary films. There are many genres of the documentary films. Please come to us. Bring your films to us. We will be very happy. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to hear about an, an open cinema. Um, I would like to ask, so at the moment in the film center, do you screen both um, international documentaries and Russian documentaries? Yes, we do show international and Russian films, of course, because both international and Russian films are released, the documentary films are released. Well, Anton Masarov is here with us today with Antipod Company. There are two films that were connected with China, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Life is a Mystery, if I'm not mistaken, and Canton. So these are two documentary films. I think it's the American films, right? The production, the, the USA. But that's from recent films. No, no, Swedish, Swedish, sorry. Two weeks, one film, and two weeks, another film was shown. I can't say that it was Full House, but a few people were always interested to watch the film, and there was a, they were given a chance to watch the film. Well, another film that was mentioned here, I forgot, The Rings of Peace by Miroshenchenko. It was a really strong film. A lot of money was spent for making that film. Technically, it's a very strong film. Yeah, but it didn't produce the interest. For some reason, the audience was not very interested. We had an agreement for two weeks, but I kept it longer. I was showing it longer because I was hoping for the audience to come and watch it more. Because the film is about um, overcoming something which is important for every man. I, no, no, for two weeks I kept it on the screen and then the audience didn't really come to watch it. Kosakovsky, when I saw on the message to man his film, Quiet, I was so charmed by that motion picture. I could show it shot by shot to my friends. I was reading it like a book. I loved it and I was thinking, how do I show it? How do I show it? I made an interview also with Kosakovsky later on. And a lot of time passed. I became a director, programming director in Rodina, and then I have another film of Kosakovsky, um, Viva Antipod. Long Live the Antipodes. It's with Gottfried Reggio, analogy with Gottfried Reggio, it's a philosophy, beautiful. You penetrate the earth, what's on one side of the earth, what's on the other side, it looks at people. Great, fantastic S South American family and then crossing the border. Fantastic. It was very interesting to watch. And then Shanghai also. Remember there was just a huge water space and then ferries crossed the water space. But just didn't produce much interest among the audience. I don't know. But for a month, I honestly showed it. So Viktor Kosakovsky, he has nothing to blame me with. I did everything I could for him. Why am I saying that? Don't wait, don't wait for commercial results. A lot of people were t talking about that yesterday and today. You get the su state support, you unite the countries, partnerships you create, nine countries or all Europe. What for? In order to ask money from the European Union. Give us money. The European Union gives the money, they make the program, and there is a problem because they cannot motivate each other. They're lacking the motivation. Money is there, but the motivation is not there. So think about it. Now look at another company in Malmo, in another town, another city. They have concerts, 
events, special events at the same time, documentary films, ice cream, lots of fun, people drink beer, get together, chips. That's super, no? And, and one third of the budget comes as a profit. Come on, there is no meaning in that. Get the small room, very quiet and dark, show, show a film about soul, about how the soul is developing, how the soul is growing. And that's it. Nothing more is needed. So, when you screen a, a documentary, you, how do you work with, with marketing? How do you with, work with uh, targeting audiences? Or are you just, you know, not just, but relying on that it's a great work? You mean when I'm showing the film, when I'm showing the film, screening the film? Yeah. Track the audience. First of all, our movie theater is in St. Petersburg. What it means? It's the city where the art is appreciated and people try to be educated. Documentary film is part of education system and documentary film is an art. So you have to be acquainted with documentary film if you're an educated person. So the life itself is helping me. But of course we do have a website. I can, I can show you the site, the website of the Rodina Film Theater. So we have feature films and documentary film, art house films. I try to have a very broad spectrum of what we show, so the audience has a choice. I think choice is very important for the audience. I don't want to make a choice for the audience. I don't want to drag the audience. I don't want to give them candy so they would come to me. I don't want to do that. I give a choice. I give a broad spectrum of choice. I open the doors and say, come. You want a comedy? Here's comedy for you. You want a drama? Here's drama. You want to wake up? Here's the thriller. So I want to make a nice choice. And also documentary films. I want the documentary to be part of what we show. Of course, advertising we have. We have billboards. We have advertising on our billboards at the movie theater and in the subway stations. We have posters. Have inf we have social networks that we're using, such as Facebook, Contacti. We have a PR specialist, a press secretary, but I, I'm not thinking about that. I know there's a person, I don't have time for that myself. I trust Katya, who is my colleague, a press secretary, if she has questions for me, or if I have questions for her, or if I want to educate her, explain some things for her, why we do certain things, then I talk to her. And I want, I'm hoping for understanding so she would understand how she writes, for example, in social networks and in our site, because that's her job. I don't have time for that. Even though I'm a journalist, I could have done, I could have written those texts but for marketing, but I don't have time for that. Comments from the room? Um, I would, yeah. Do you, have st do, you have, do you have state support? Of course. I mean, we're a state. We're on the state budget. Even if we don't show anything, if we have no screenings, that we still have a state support. Come on. We have, they, I mean, my employees will have little, but still salary. No? And we have a budget about 2 million rubles. Monthly, per month. So I think we're bringing the profit. Well, look, there are feature films. You think about Woody Allen, and I'm making a lot of money on Woody Allen. But parallel to Woody Allen, I can show three documentary films. That's what I'm doing. Prokofiev? That's of um, Northwestern film from Victor Scubay's from 
He brought me, I think in, in spring we had a meeting. He brought me Volodya Nipemnov film about the expedition. That's historical, that's historical film about a wonderful expedition. But nobody talks about it right now because it's vanished from history. There was geographic discovery, one of geographic dis last geographic discoveries that was done in, in, in the year 14, in, still in Imperial Russia. But then we had revolution, then we have the civil war and all the horror in Russia. And then it completely erased that discovery from the heads of people. Because you understand what happens. Um, those expedition people, some of them were whites, some of them became reds. Those who were for the whites, they were killed. Very few survived in the immigration. But the memory about this, so the memory about this great uh, discovery was erased. Recently, the researchers found a lot of photographs in the archive that were made during the expedition. Hundreds of thousands of photographs of fantastic quality. You can just do the panoramic camera uh, movement, zoom in, do the close-up, fantastic quality. So they made a film from those photographs from the archive. It's unique. It's like you emerge riding the uh, time machine 100 years ago, and you stay there. It's documentary. It's documentary, very real film about people, about their fates. It's not made up about what really happened to people like us. Any other comments in the room? I would like to ask you also working as a distributor if you have any comments to the to the talk. No, I don't have any special comments. I remember Rodina as a venue which uh, before you or under you uh, has brought about the situation whereby St. Petersburg, uh, um, St. Petersburg overtook Moscow in terms of takings, in terms of revenues from art house film screenings. Um, uh, uh, fairly um, uh, uh, recently, I was uh, I released the Bowling for Columbine um, uh, documentary film. Uh, and uh, the film Virginity by Mansky. Uh, the key hobby horse of uh, Rodina uh, is uh, that the, the pricing policy is consistent with the expectations or meets the expectations of, of the student audience and of the um, educated people uh, of the educated people that uh, attend the cinema. Uh, in other um, places across uh, Russia, there are few links between uh, the target audience and the uh, pricing policies. So the venues that um, uh, that have been showing art house for uh, years do not bring their prices down, and they're losing the audience as a result of the crisis. Uh, and um, that's uh, the uh, that's all the comment that I want to make. Yes, our prices are really democratic, and we like to keep them so. Our administration, our economists think about different marketing uh, moves and strategies uh, to achieve the situation. For example, in summer, uh, this summer on Mondays, uh, we uh, showed the films at 100 rubles. Just any uh, any uh, any time, uh, morning, matinees, um, afternoons, evenings, whatever, and it works. You know, it works. Uh, the autumn has come, and uh, my director is saying, Alexei, why don't we uh, use this tactic? Why don't we use these uh, the uh, our summer's strategy? Um, I said yes, um, of course, but uh, don't. Um, uh, don't limit me in uh, attempting to show uh, documentaries, because we keep uh, having uh, those ideological arguments. Uh, why do you uh, why do you insist on showing documentary films? There are just two people there. Um, uh, okay, it's uh, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. Uh, we could use the time. It's just one hour. Why not? There will be two people coming uh, coming here today, and more people coming tomorrow. So I have to be really very diplomatic about how 
um, our interface with the administration because uh, they say uh, they think that my love of the documentaries is my drawback, my personal drawback. I'm not a bad man. I'm uh, not a conflict mongerer, uh, but uh, there is one drawback that I have, one personal drawback. I love uh, documentary cinema. Uh, so sometimes I do have uh, really animated discussions with uh, with my management. For some of the documentaries, you get two people in the room. So, so how about this idea of of bringing an added value, an event, a discussion, a clown, something that that would never happen at Rodina. Uh, that's what you, uh, yes, you're, you're totally right, but um, if it's uh, a one-off show and we need to collect some audience, um, yes, the clowns might be there, but um, if, the film, uh, if the film is shown on rotation, I understand that when we show one film um, on, uh, on Tuesday, there will be two people, on Friday there will be five, uh, on Saturday there will be, say, 100. Um, but um, I understand that uh, there are different factors that preclude the audience from coming to uh, to an event. And uh, if it's a repeat event, uh, that's 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 great. Uh, you um, uh, you can come on Sunday and you can still watch that film. Also, for uh, premieres. Uh, um, for uh, documentaries or uh, feature films, uh, if there is an opportunity to uh, to invite, um, say, uh, the uh, the writer um, on which the uh, on whose book the film is based, or um, somebody interesting, of course we uh, we do that. We um, um, invite them, encourage them to talk to the audience, to uh, run a discussion, or to sit somewhere in the uh, uh, in the cinema lobby uh, talking with the audience, etc., etc. Uh, and this, um, we take it for granted. This is self self explanatory. Uh, it doesn't need explaining. We do that. We do that. Here. Just a couple of words. Uh, uh, Alexei was talking about um, yes, one or two people in the auditorium. Sometimes uh, there are there are more, and Alexei's team. Uh, works hard to uh, achieve the situation whereby uh, the documentary films still get their views and uh, they spread the information via social media. And uh, there are Wednesdays for documentary uh, films in the uh, smaller auditorium and uh, the road in the cinema. Uh, and um, we are. Sp uh, I am going to be present at one such uh, Wednesday meeting, and we're spreading this information around. And I think that such regular events are imp uh, such regular screenings are important because the uh, the film team has an opportunity to contact their viewers, to contact their friends, uh, to discuss what they liked about it, what they didn't. Uh, whether they, uh, whether the filmmakers are following the right direction, are taking the right direction, and this is great. And uh, I would like to thank Rodina for doing that, uh, and Paul as well. Thank you. Any final comments from the audience? Then, or for you, from you. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I want to add is that uh, all the formats that were described, that have been described over these two days, um, we do all of this. Uh, we work uh, with our viewers like this. It's just that we don't accentuate one of them, we, uh, any one of them. We uh, we're not limited by any one of them. There are special events, yes. There are premier premieres. There are film teams coming, uh, coming to uh, present this film, and uh, then we start screening the film regularly. Then we start regular screenings, uh, and then. Uh, uh, for example, we can uh, we can buy the rights, we can buy um, a restored copy that we fished somewhere out of the archives. Uh, for example, we showed uh, several, fil uh, several, uh, several films uh, 
uh, dedicated to the uh, Second World War uh, as part of our uh, White Pillars project. Um, uh, and uh, these events, special events, um, do collect their audiences, uh, and uh, our uh, cinema club people uh, will confirm what I'm saying. Uh, uh, so in the middle of October, uh, in the middle of October, these people there will be uh, uh, will be presenting their own films in, uh, and their, their concept in uh, our cinema. So we have all of this. There is nothing new. Uh, it's uh, it's the same word, uh, world that we are sharing, and these strategies are entirely. Um, available to us and acceptable to us. But uh, this this miracle that, uh, that I'm in, this fairy tale that I'm suddenly uh, in a state-run, a state-subsidized cinema, uh, central St. Petersburg, two steps of Nevsky Prospect, what else do you need? That's, uh, that's an ideal situation. That's an ideal situation and, uh, and a perfect opportunity to uh, to screen your documentaries uh, because everything is settled. Uh, the rights issues are settled, everything. Um, and we use all of this. And um, we're, we're running our own website uh, where you can uh, watch um, a huge selection of films. Even, th uh, uh, even, though, uh, uh, even though the name is uh, our name, uh, that we have is still the children's cinema, uh, which is also good. We uh, get uh, great um, contact with a young audience. Uh, we sometimes uh, meet together for hardcore discussions. Uh, and uh, for example, we contact the Vaganov uh, uh, Ballet Academy uh, that trains um, ballet dancers and ballerinas. They, someti uh, they sometimes contact us to, um, uh, to screen, um, uh, requesting to screen films about ballet. And we do. Uh, it's uh, difficult to engage very young children because uh, it's not the right situation. The very young children uh, will go to shopping malls, uh, to, uh, to multiplexes, because uh, there is uh, a bouquet of entertainment, restaurants, cafes, bright light, the music, uh, all of it. Uh, so, and children, uh, very young children are attracted to that. We have a classical cinema, nice, nice architecture exquisite, sophisticated. In the historical center, it's a period building, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, building, uh, the building is protected, um, uh, protected as a historical monument, as an art uh, monument. So we work under really uh, strict regulations regarding painting, even, or uh, any redesign. And sometimes the director goes, um, why, did you, why did you take this, this pic? Who is going to see it? It's 14 plus. The picture is about, uh, I say, uh, the picture is about first love. Oh, we have been showing it for, uh, for a week, and we have just five people in the audience. Five, whole five people in the audience, I'm saying. Uh, and, uh, so, and they recognize uh, and they identify with what they see happening on the screen. They uh, know how to build their relations, this molds their souls. Uh, and uh, at first they understand, and then you have to repeat the, uh, and you have to, uh, to repeat the routine because um, see, uh, the guys are looking at profits, the guys are looking at the sales um, figures. Uh, and then um, I start saying, um, okay, the, uh, the, um, we are responsible for the distri distribution of the film. The film has to run for one whole week, so there is no choice. We, uh, we're under contractual relations, etc. cetera. Um, I have to visit next time I come to St. Petersburg. Uh, thank you for the speech, and uh, thank you and your invitation to come to you with films, um, and now it's time for lunch, and we'll meet back here again in approximately one hour. Thank you. Um, yes, I would encourage everyone to come to the Rodina. Uh, at least uh, pay us a short visit. Just take a look at the building. It's uh, one of the unique buildings in St. Petersburg.